Hello, legends, heroes, and poopy heads. Welcome to the Omni Flash channel, where Omni Flash will take gaming to the next level. Hello, my friends. This is Omni Flash. Today, we're making a video on Dust Origins, also called Dust Temple Original. This is the level 109 Dust Temple and it can get you level 119 legendary materials and that is what you are aiming for so this video right here will walk you through exactly how i do my dust temple origins and how you should try to do them and if your whole team follows these tips you should be able to do them as well now the recommended battle rating for Dust Temple Origins is 300 KBR. I don't think that that works for DPS. Your DPS, I recommend, if you want to have a, a easier run, it'll be best if your DPS is around 370 KBR. I just, I just feel like it. They need a lot of DPS just so that they can kill these bosses before they enrage if you don't kill them before they enrage you are in deep trouble because those bosses will start killing off your team members and one-shotting them and there's nothing you can do dusk origins and dusk original they are real real tough tough dungeons you do need to use your best mana food best hp food be sure to buy some of the best uh, HP healing pills as well as some tranquilizers. You're going to need these because no matter how good your healer is, sometimes the boss is going to hit you and you will be almost dead and the healer will not have time to heal you to full. So you need to help out, use some of those HP pills as well as maybe a tranquilizer especially on the first boss and the last boss. All right, so I don't put my points into luck using my life skills. Instead, I do always, you go to Arkansas City, you pray to that statue, and that gets you luck for one hour. You can do your dust as well as you can do your cultivation dungeons during that time. Also, be sure to use a luck scroll that you get from your territory boxes as well as try to form teams with four of your guild members. That will also boost your luck. However, I don't think it's worth life skill points to put into luck. Alright, so we're getting to the first boss. The first boss is Grimemouth. Grimemouth is pretty strong. There are two ways for you to tank this one way you take grime mount and you bring him to the right or the left whichever one your tank chooses let your tank do whatever he's comfortable with he brings it to the trumpeteer okay he brings it to the trumpeteer and this way when your dps are killing the trumpeteer the aoe skills are also hitting the boss seems pretty nice right you can do that all right and then after that trumpeteer is dead move your dps will go to the other side and kill the other trumpeteer the trumpeteer spawns monsters so you have to kill them quickly or your team will be overrun with with small monsters that don't hurt you one by one but you know if there's 10 or 15 of them you're you're gonna die so also another thing is that we're going to talk about the boss's attacks. Oh, okay, right here. So the healer can move from right to left. Depending on, on who's getting hurt, you can move right or left. So the healer stands in the center if, you're, if your tank is standing on the left. And if your DPS have moved right to kill that other trumpeteer after that trumpeteer is dead, your DPS comes back focuses and continues to kill grime mouth now as a healer you do want to keep iron heart stacks on your entire team now this uh grime mouth he does a real big attack which is like ground tremor 
it is an AoE attack. I think it does like 20k, 25k damage per hit. During that time, if you want, you can use your regeneration skill. I found that, especially if I have lower HP DPS, regeneration can possibly survive, help them survive. Also, if you are a lower HP DPS, and you don't want your team to, you know, cry whenever you die, be sure to bring some of those HP pills with you and be sure to use that whenever Ground Tremor. Also, you can use Chi Burst. If you use Chi Burst on Ground Tremor, also you can use Tranquilizer to block tr uh, Ground Tremor. Also, the uh, the Grime Mouth, he has another attack. It's it's called like King's Roar. That actually can be interrupted by the tanks. The tanks can use something called Fury Swipe. Also, Blade Masters can use another skill called Flash Kick to interrupt King's Roar. Now, if you see him shooting out the whirlwinds, be sure to dodge those, or those will actually stun you as well. Yeah, there you go. That's the King's Roar, but Shin, our tank, is interrupting him so that it doesn't actually do any damage to anyone. So, yeah, you, that's one thing that your tanks and your Blade Masters have to keep under control because that King's Roar can actually hurt a lot. But if your tank is actually interrupting him and King's Roar is not is not not hitting anybody, you are doing a perfect job. All right, so we've killed we've killed Grimes Mouth and I got Minister's Dark Sigil. That is my first most amazing. This is actually my first. This is my first Dust Origin run. All right, so I mean, I have done a gazillion dust. I have done a gazillion dust nightfalls, and before that, whatever. But I, this this is absolutely amazing. I have never gotten anything from Grime Mouth in my life, but Grime Mouth decided to give me a Christmas present, and here it is, a minister's dark uh, sigil, I think. All right, be sure to kill Johan. Johan gives you a 10 minute buff. All right, so Johan is in this little corner. You should kill Johan. He gives you a 10 minute buff that will prevent you from being hypnotized by Sot, the second boss. So you're going to have to kill Johan or your team will get hypnotized during the next, the next battle, during the second boss battle, and you won't be able to finish her off in time. All right, just some more extra tips on the first boss, Grime Mouth, is that you have to deal enough damage to him before, I think about five minutes. If, you, if, it, if it's like past a certain amount of time, he will enrage and he will start killing everybody. He turns red. He just does so much damage that most likely your tank will not be able to survive. Uh, one thing about it is that your tank should have a lot of block. If you're a tank right now, you should start getting block on pretty much every piece of your gear. If you can't get double block, get at least one block on every piece of your gear and you should be set. You want somewhere around 100% block. Uh, also, if you can't kill him before he enrages, you can kite him. You, if you can, you can just sort of kite him, and you can sort of see when he's about to hit you. You can use chi skills to block that. This can probably drag out for another 10 or 15 seconds, giving your DPS a little bit of extra time to kill Grime Mouth. All right, this is Soth. All right, so Soth. Important thing about Soth is you have to kill Johan. If you don't kill Johan, the hypnotize will will cause your whole team to not be able to do anything for like 10 seconds so the way you want to tank uh, soft you want to have soft on the platform okay and then most of your DPS will be on the ground and the reason you want to do this is because you want soft to throw these sand whirling things on the ground 
you don't want to be too close so that she throws the sand the sand the quicksand whirlwind pull on top of the barb and if she does that that barb does have to move your tank will have to move away from that if that ever happens the Annihilator that she summons doesn't do that much damage. I usually ignore him. You just want to grab Soth and keep Soth's attention. Keep her on the platform. And most of your team will be down here on the ground. Do be sure to dodge any of her um, AoE skills. Like her cone-shaped AoE will cause you to be feared. Also, be sure not to get hit by the circular red AOE circles as well. If you keep doing that, this boss is relatively easy as long as your team has the DPS. Once again, if, uh, if you don't have enough DPS, she will enrage. You will have a 1 minute and a 30 second warning. And uh, after that, she, she'll, she'll just w start one-shotting everybody. If she starts, if she enrages, your tank can can do the same thing, can sort of chi burst and sort of tank it for a little bit. Also, if, if the boss starts hitting you, if you have a goblin pet or something like that, you might be able to tank her a little bit. The only problem with Soth is that she is ranged, so you can't really outrun a ranged boss. So. Out running, kiting a ranged boss doesn't really work, so you actually do need enough DPS in order to kill Saw. Other than that, her attacks are relatively easy to dodge. You just gotta watch out. Her most powerful attacks is that little sand thing, as well as her cone shape attack. Alright, we're going to the last boss. Last boss, you just have to go through this little circle thing. Then we go down and we will face the Mirage Lord. Be sure to keep an eye and just if any of your teammates have died, be sure to rebuff them. If you're the Barb, you want to give them their P attack buff. If you are a healer, you want to give them your M attack buffs. Make sure everybody who has died is rebuffed. And is ready to go so right now we just have some phantoms to kill you can you can sort of afk during phantoms right yeah okay so the last boss is tough so if you have some golden poppy it is a vitality buff it will give you the for the next 10 minutes an extra vitality that can help uh, i recommend using it Golden Poppy is so cheap on my server, I think it costs 36 gold. Alright, so we're just we're just killing some of these phantoms. They do actually drop some gear sometimes. This last boss is tough because surrounding this last boss are walls of minions. And these giant minions do a lot of damage. The only person who can actually tank these minions is if you are 100% block tank. So if your tank is tanking it, he can probably tank those minions. None, none of your DPS or clerics will be able to. Alright, so one thing that I haven't mentioned is what are these little egg shaped yellow circles? That is from my overheal sacred book. What is this golden uh, bubbles? That is my goblin shield. So we have three members with goblins. Elise, Omni Flash, that's me, and the Punisher. We all have goblins. And Elise is, is a wizard. And the Punisher is an archer. So you do want to have an archer on your team. Archers can decrease the HP of the boss so basically if you start out a boss fight with an archer on your team and archer knows what's doing and he actually debuffs the boss immediately the boss loses something like 10 percent of its health which is a great great thing to do especially 
when every second counts before the boss enrages. Especially on this last fight, there is a ticking time bomb. After a certain amount of time, the walls of minions will close in on you and the only way for you to survive is to learn how to walk back and forth. If you look on the ground, you can see there's these lines. There's a grid. So that, that grid will be your best friend. You're going to use that grid and practice walking back and forth, okay? Just practice. If you aren't very good at practicing walking back and forth, practice walking back and forth. Have yourself centered on the boss. The tank will have to sit on the center. And all right, all right, so this is really tough right here. The boss decided to throw the sand on top of the tank. All right, so what happens is this Mirage Lord boss, he actually, as a second form, he can transform into Soth or Grimemouth. If he transforms into Soth, be sure to watch out for that sand. If you are the tank and you have that sand, be sure to move, but move towards Yes, move towards the cleric. That's right. Don't move on the other side of the sand. The, your whole team has to be somewhere close enough so that the cleric can heal you. All right. So I think I think somebody got somebody somebody might have got gotten feared, and uh, so the team wiped. If you get feared, it happens to all the best teams. It doesn't matter. If you get feared, just restart. Just the whole team dies restart because you just you're not able to uh, you're not able to tank these minions as they get closer in so be sure to focus on standing in the center so we're going to restart and this last boss is probably the, the toughest toughest boss now there's also one more thing it's called mirage pool Mirage Pool is, the boss does this twice before he dies. Mirage Pool is where he takes usually a DPS, hopefully a DPS. He takes one of the DPS out of fight and sticks you into a little square room with six Mirage Elementals. You, you, as a DPS, you have to go in and you have to kill those Elementals, okay? Kill those Elementals, get out, and your healer will be outside and try to heal you. Usually, he chooses the same person over and over again. So if your team wipes once, you already kind of know who is going to be thrown into that Mirage Pool again. And because of that, be sure to give that DPS several stacks of Ironheart, okay? Also, since we are st just starting to fight Dust Temple uh, Origins, our DP, uh, our battle rating isn't super high. You will most likely not be able to take the Mirage Lord's health down fast enough. And what he does, he does some sort of skill called Divine Punishment. And with Divine Punishment, all your, like everybody in your team gets this really, really annoying yellow circle. And everyone starts taking super heavy damage. When that happens, you have to use a tranquilizer. You have to use your chi burst to block, to make yourself invulnerable. You need to use tranquilizer to make you invulnerable. You need to use those HP pills to gain back 20k health. Because if you don't do that, and too many of your team dies, from Divine Punishment. Talking about dead, I just died. But you see that yellow bubble around me? That's right, my goblin saved me. Made me invulnerable for three seconds. It's called his Earth Puppet skill. And now I have rehealed myself. All right, so you gotta watch. All right, well, this is great. I'm glad that in this video, you can see that he chooses Grime Mouth. If he chooses Grimemouth, Grimemouth is just like the first boss. I feel like Grimemouth is perhaps the easier boss, okay? Because you don't have to worry about a huge whirling sand pool. And that whirling sand pool can, can
can, right in the middle can really cause your team to have to spread out. Your team will have to spread out and accidentally run into the walls of minions, okay? So I feel like Grimemouth is a is one of the better bosses that he can turn into instead of Soth because that sand pool is really annoying and can prevent you from being able to heal. Yeah, so you know you got ground tremor. Ground tremor does a lot of damage. You do want to chi burst. Oh, okay. So I did not. I wasn't able to dodge uh, those red circles. If you don't dodge the red circles, what happens? You you turn into uh, like a, a zombie or something for ten seconds. And you can't do anything, and you just sort of have to pray that your team not. Just pray that your team does not turn to zombies because that will prevent you from having enough DPS to finish off the boss. All right, so you see those walls of minions. They're getting close. So your whole team. All right, this is, this is it. So your whole team, you have to pray that every member on your team knows how to walk back and forth, okay? Because hopefully... Yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm practicing walking back and forth. You see those red circles, right? Those red circles just appeared. Because if, if your team tries to dodge those red circles and, and walks to the side, those minions will aggro you and destroy your team. So just practice walking back and forth. That's so important. Fog, huge, huge cone-shaped attack. It is sometimes good to be sort of close to the boss this way if if the cone shape attack is attacking you you can just walk to the other side of the boss then you can come back after the cone shape attack is done all right there you go that's it so that is how we do dust origin i, I want to show you this is my first dust origin dust temple origin got my minister's dark soul I'm so psyched. The Minister's Dark Soul is probably worth, I'm guessing, 10 million. Right now, it's not selling because well, we're not 119 yet. So it might be a good idea for you to hold on to your Dark uh, Minions. All right, so I got my achievement for doing my first Dust Temple Origin. Here is the team. So if you guys like this video, I hope this video has answered all your questions on how to do it. Oh yeah, one more thing out. A few days later, I also got another 119 drop. So it is very important to do Dust Temple. It may take you an hour, may take you an hour and a half to make a team. But it is worth doing this dungeon because the rewards are amazing. If you get the 119 legendary mats, you can get super strong. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys the best. If you have any comments, like any tips on Dusk Origin, if you like this video, tell me what your next video you want to see is. And I'll see you next time. Please like and subscribe.